Good afternoon, Shifts to Success. I hope you are doing very, very well and enjoying the sun. It's a really hot one today. And uh, I'm really thrilled and excited to introduce you to a very inspiring and probably one of the most resilient people I have ever met. Um, this individual uh, has joined Shifts to Success cohort four, um, has a single mother to two boys and is also the founder of S Collective. And she's going to be sharing with you her story, her, uh, her mindset as well, which is incredibly inspiring, and also some business tips along the way. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Samantha Paul. Sam, how are you? Thank you. I'm good, actually. I'm very warm. I can't believe we're doing this on like the warmest day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shut, shut all the doors to make sure that we, you know, it's uh, less noise as possible. But no, really good. Really good. Had an amazing month. Best month ever. And yeah, I can't quite believe it, to be honest. Amazing. I can't wait to get into that as well. Um, yeah. First of all, though, I want to take you right back. It's one of the first things we ask people who join the Shift Success podcast is, what was it like for you growing up as a uh, as a kid, really? What, what was you like? Was you kind of naughty? Was you academic? Or um, So I was a bit of a little adult. Apparently they called me a wise soul. Uh, my mum was 16 when she had me. Um, I was born in London. And um, my mum was offered basically a council house in Owlsbury to build up Owlsbury at the time. So um, she met a new partner um, when I was three and we moved to Owlsbury. Um, quite a difficult childhood, to be honest. Um, but, you know, you just kind of like get through it. Um, I became a big sister at 11, but ended up having to look after my brother quite a lot so that my mum and dad could both work so I finished school came home and looked after my little brother and um, so that made friendships and things a little bit diff difficult because I couldn't go out and play um, unless I took out my little brother so um, yeah I became kind of like this little I don't know this little powerhouse I was just like you know looking after him being protective of him um, dealt with a lot of confidence issues growing up um, but never ever let it get on top of me you know I just seemed to be was bullied for a little while, but then found my power and um, never let somebody bully me again. And I think that's where that sheer determination comes through that grit. When you have the courage to stand up to somebody, um, it just instills this little bit of fire in you. And it's like, yeah, no, we're not going to let that happen. Um, but I also had these problems where I kept getting put in the special hut because they didn't understand me because I was extremely clever in some aspects and then just couldn't do the simplest of things. Um, like what? Like there was um, like reading and writing, particularly writing I struggled with, um, particularly grammar. And even now I still can't really get grammar. So um, they would put me in the special hut and then all of a sudden I passed my 12 plus. Hmm. And everybody was like, how on earth did she do that? Um, but rather than me letting me have my place at my grammar school, the, the teachers told my parents at the time, because we were still on a council house, not very um, affluent, um, they actually said, we don't think she's got enough confidence to go to grammar school. And we would rather that she does really well in a normal secondary school than go to a grammar school and, and struggle. And because my parents, like looking at the prices of the if uniform and everything else, they were just like, oh, we better listen to the teachers and, and put her into the worst secondary school in Owlsbury at that time. Wow. Wow. But, um, I, I apologise if you hear a chihuahua. Um, <laughs> I've got the boys to look after her, but she's uh, she wants to join the party every time. <laughs> um, but did really well, you know, got my GCSEs, really wanted to go to um, college to do travel and tourism, because I always love, love travel. But yet again, the money obstacle came up again because it was two grand to do this course at college. And my dad, bless him, was, it was around the time when the recession hit like the first that I remember anyway the first recession my dad had to go and work in Birmingham for six months um because he was a roofer and he got laid off in 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 his hometown so he had to find work in another town um he's another reason why I am why I am today as well because like just grafter you know he's, he's my stepdad but he took me as his own at six and just yeah amazing amazing man and um yeah so I did my A-levels but didn't do very well <laughs> found pubs and nightclubs and you know started going out and <laughs> having a bit of fun you know came out of a dnre my mum was like how did you end up with dnre and i was like i know because it was 40 percent coursework so give me coursework or anything like that you know and i can kind of do it um and then 
travel was still in my bones. So the first job I got was with Forte Hotels. They had a call centre in Aylesbury, one of the biggest call centres. Um, and I joined the team on the leisure department. And that was like my first introduction to, yeah, sales. And it was sales, 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 targets, leaderboards, you know, hang your headset up if you go into the toilet and you can't be in the toilet more than four minutes. Cause <laughs> wow, like boiler room style. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was full on. It was full on. Um, so I did that for a couple of years, then went into another control room, um, which was paying a bit better. Um, and then, or oh, have I paused? I'm still there, still there. Yeah, still there. And yeah. then I um, became a holiday rep. Um, I went on holiday with my girlfriends for two weeks yeah. with Club 1830. What a delight that was. One wow. Still- accommodation in Malia and um there was these two girls on this bar and they were like please please come in tonight because there was like eight of us because mm-hmm. if we get you in then we'll get the boys in and then we'll get <laughs> more boys in, and then we'll get more girls in and everything so and it became our first destination um and because I'm a bit of a joker I was behind the bar pulling you know doing shots and I've always been a helper yeah. I've always like led dance teams helped out done voluntary work I've always been a helper so I was helping behind the bar loads when it got packed and at the end of the holiday the uh, the bar owner said I want you to say Samantha please stay please do the <laughs> thing please stay and I just had this vision of me phoning my mum saying I'm not coming home I'm gonna stay out here and like then this second vision of my dad and my mum on the plane to Greece to bring me back home um so yeah and and so when I came back it was a bit like what do I do now so mm. my mum said why don't you be a holiday rep she goes because I think that will be a bit safer I was like, right, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, applied to be a and then got sent to Ibiza. Wow, okay. So how, how old was you this this kind of period in your life? So I was 21. So 20- just just turned 21 and boarded a plane and went out to Ibiza. 21, wow, that's not bad. Going, I, I've never been to Ibiza, as you see, so I'm, I'm quite jealous. Um, <laughs> you've got, you've got to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I plan to. Um, so... so 21 years old, you, you're kind of traveling already, you you know, you've got this kind of almost like kind of extrovert personality, would you say? You love meeting people, that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. very much extrovert on the outside, but the, in the inside is like peddling, like they say that, that uh, vision of the swan, isn't it? So it's just, you know, floating along, but then the legs are going like this. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just love, you know, just love life and love the opportunity. I think if you haven't got money and you haven't got, you know, travel, I didn't go on my first holiday till I was 18 abroad mm. you know that that wasn't part of our growing up there was no we're lucky mm. if we got caravan in Bournemouth for a week you know wow so so wow so okay so you're 21 at this point and yeah. you know what age did you join the police in co- control room right yeah so um I ended up doing um four years repping and then came back and I'd always 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 wanted to be a police officer um but travel still seemed to be in my bones so I went to work at Luton airport and I was ground crew for a little while um, and but they still I was like, oh, I think I'm going to join up. And then I opened up the Bucks Herald one day, and they said they were looking for police control room staff. So I thought, oh, actually, this might be quite nice because it gets me to know about the job. But I'm in a safe environment because I'd always worried about safety, and my mum and dad had always been worried about safety. So um, yeah, joined the control room, and um, yeah, all these six year old men were very excited to have an air hostess or ground crew joining the team. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they were. Oh, it was hilarious because I had to come to the interview in my like all my get up with you know my, my uniform on and everything, and it, it was just hilarious. <laughs> um, and in my interview, he was like, "Will you consider signing up?" And I was like, "I don't feel like I'm ready at the moment, but mm. let me have a couple of years in control room, um, and then I'll see." And they said, "Right, okay, that that's cool with us." So yeah, started in the control room when I was I think I was about twenty four, twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. So 24, 25. And uh, how did you find it? Do you enjoy it? Was it a bit? Te- oh, I loved it. Great. I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I found it um, like quite upsetting at times. And it was one of the reasons why I didn't actually end up joining up. Um, a lot of the incidents that I dealt with, I was like, I'm not sure how I'll be able to deal with that. If I actually saw it, I mm. quite liked the detachment of operating it and knowing what had happened because obviously you have to document it all into the systems but not actually seeing it I think I suffered from nightmares quite a lot and I think wow I'd have seen a lot of it I think it would have caused me quite a lot of trauma so um and I couldn't believe the pay like I would have had to have dropped like by the time I'd done two years in control room I would have had to drop five grand six grand to go out on the beat 
Yeah, this is this is a funny one. I mentioned it. So I was a detention officer. You know, I was I think I was about twenty five starting off, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight as I went on. And you know, cops I think they're starting off about eighteen grand now, which is yeah. which is crazy, right? And I mean, the cops do a lot more than in, yeah, in regards to right. So them. you know, and yeah. I was sat next to a lovely lady, um, and I was like, you know, what are you doing in control room? You know, when you're an officer, what are you doing here? And she was like, when a crazy drug addict puts a gun to your head. And was inches away from blowing your brains out. Wow. I, and, I, and that really was it for me. I was just like, Crazy. yeah, I, I just thought I'm going to sit here in my chair. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> and Just try and keep them as safe as possible with the way I control the incidents, you know. Wow. Uh, but yeah, it's, okay. it opened my eyes quite a lot. So how long was you in the control room for in total? Um, about 13 years in the end. Wow. So, okay. It's, it's a long time. Um, so yeah i um so they closed Owlsbury control room and we all had to move to milton Keynes. Mm -hmm. so um moved over to the milton Keynes control room and then was not only dealing with kind of three areas we then had to deal with like slough milton Keynes, windsor bracknell areas that i didn't even know like i knew Owlsbury. i grew up i knew where the alleyways were i knew where the fields led on to what roads they did because you know we hung about the feet that's yeah. what you did you played outside so I knew it it was my back garden and I could just tell them and obviously they loved me when I was on the radio because I just knew I could knew exactly where to send them and what to do um Slough was a bit bonkers yeah wow. a bit bonkers and we'd have like 50 60 jobs running at the same time that you know so, so where it was a little bit different from you know the police yes you're going back to back jobs but we were actually managing you know 10 incidents to 60 incidents um yeah. at that time wow um, why i think i am like i am now in business because yeah. i'm managing multiple things at once you are that is straight it's very true and we'll definitely get onto that i've got to ask this question because cops always mention it was as a control room dispatcher was there any cop that really like pissed you off and you just sent him the bad jobs <laughs> <laughs> no i didn't actually but if if they peed me off they knew about it and actually once they knew what kind of operator I was they didn't because I I mean I used to wind them up because if they were refusing to do something I used to call the duty inspector on air and said are you monitoring over and they would say yes over and the next minute the, the, the officer would go zero five <laughs> you know and it was like don't mess with me I remember one having this massive fallout because a old lady had basically been pushed over she'd gone down a hill and had her bag snatched and um, because it was quarter past seven in the morning and it was handover nobody yeah. would go out oh my god I was losing my stuff <laughs> they were like yeah and they come up afterwards and went mm, we know not to cross you don't we I was like uh yes yeah you know, everyone's quiet on the radio yeah I feel passionate about it it was a 75 year old lady I saw everything yeah. like if that was my granny yeah. I'd be, oh, just just go out you know? <laughs> yeah. but, uh, <laughs> I, can remember, I can remember in Knott's Police, um, a lot of, um, and he has a special, everyone was, um, you know, getting fed up with the dispatches and stuff. It was just funny, just a funny dynamic. Yeah. Um, so, so 13 years in control room. Um, why did you start thinking about business? So it was a funny thing, actually. So I had my um, eldest son, Harvey, who's now 13, mm -hmm. um, and um, ended up going back. We only got three months or six months off at the time, but because Harvey was 18 days overdue, I ended up going back to work when he was literally four months old um, and mm -hmm. because I wanted to be there for him during the day um, it meant I had to work night shifts so I was working um, four nights a week to do four night four on four off and then what happened was I'd actually given my husband at the time the encouragement to start up his own business so he was working for a company really not happy moved to another company and on day three the phone call was I've been sold a pup. You should see the state of this company car. I'm not doing it. I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to go back to Luminite. And I went, right. You've always worked to set up your own business. If we're going to do it, now is the time. You know, you'll be happier because you'll be your own boss. You won't have anyone telling you what to do. You've got the contacts. You've worked hard. You've still got your phone number from your old company and they've not taken it away. Mm. <laughs> Crazy mistake. Um, I just said, look, let's do it. Let's see what we can do. We were in, both of us had made money on our first properties, which we then had a large amount of that in our, in our home that we'd got. I said, you know, even if we have to take a loan or a mortgage break or downsize, we'll make it work. So um, 
that's when MK Live Team was formed. Um, and I basically did everything and work whilst he run the business. So okay. What is, MK, what is MK Lighting? Is it a lighting company? So yeah, lighting company. And he was basically a project manager. So he would, so basically our contracts that we got first off was TK Maxx, Cotswold Outdoor Clothing. Um, we would get into the high street, design all the lighting and then basically be the middlemen. So yeah, so that's how I, he set up his business. Um, and it got to the point where he just said, I just don't want to be like passing ships. Because what mm-hmm. was I didn't want to give up work. But he had to work away. So mm. it was this massive conflict all the time. And then um, he said, well, why don't we move to Spain? And I was like, OK, what's going to happen if we move to Spain? And he was like, well, 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 I'll come back for work. But when we're in Spain, we'll get the business managed and then we can have quality time with the boys in Spain. So um, really, my business journey didn't start until I got to Spain, but our family business um, he this is how well his family how the well the business did in year one we had to pay twenty seven and a half thousand pound in corporation tax wow 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 yeah. if you get excited about tax you're in the wrong bracket right <laughs> <laughs> i just couldn't believe that we had to give all that money away i was yeah. like how is that fair yeah. how is that fair but you know that just it just shows you how well the business done yeah yeah because he, oh. he was behind the business and he literally could focus on it 24 7 like he was in the dining room the door was shut you know and he just literally because I looked after everything else you of know? course okay so at this point you've uh, decided to encourage your ex-husband now to go into business because he didn't like his kind of job at the time you've been the kind of the backbone the supporting so he can focus on his business you've decided to move to Spain as at this point as well um what happens next so um, I never wanted to give up my job in control room. And the day I gave it up, literally the following week, I almost went into depression. Like I had my beautiful baby boy. And by this time, actually, I'd had Sebastian as well. So I had these two beautiful children. Um, and I said, I wasn't just going to stay at home and do nothing. Um, I said, I need a role in MK Lighting if I'm going to leave the police. Mm-hmm. So I got the accounts role. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, great big pile of receipts at the end of the month and zero training. So that was my role in the job. But I wanted to, I've grafted since I was 13 years old. I'm not just going to give up the police and then do that. So, um, so yeah, so we did that and I was helping with, with that, with MK Lighting um, until he no longer wanted me to do that role. But that's another story. Um, and then, yeah, we went off to, to Spain and initially... Like there was a lot to do because it was a different language, getting the boys into school, getting the rental property. We had a few problems with the rental property and everything else. And um, and then he went back to England. The boys were in school from eight o'clock in the morning till half past four at night. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there twiddling my thumbs and I was like, like this has come like 20 years too soon. Mm-hmm. Like if I was near retirement age, I could just put her in the garden and be fine. Yeah. But yeah, I was like in this beautiful place with my beautiful, happy boys. Not, an, It wasn't a great marriage. Um, we'd gone out there for a better quality of life and to kind of fix it. But I think it was beyond fixable then before we went. Um, and then I thought, right, what can I do? So, and then my little, like my brain was on fire because I've been running this mum to mum Facebook group, promoting all these businesses for charity to go back in the charity pot. And there was all these business ideas that were being done in the UK, but Spain hadn't even heard or seen of mascots coming to parties and, you know, big family discos and, you know, Osborne books. They were all trying to get hold of um, English books and really good English books. So I thought, okay. So I started with Osborne books. Then I set up a play group because there wasn't a play group. So, and I sat there for the first three weeks on my own. It was a bit, a bit sad. I went to Ikea, got all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but then literally after four weeks, we had 20 mummies come in with their little ones. And then it was like, I was helping them with rentals, with, they needed insurance. They needed, and I thought, hang on a minute, this is a bit like what I was doing in the UK. So um, I basically came the go-to lady. So I then created a business directory in Spain of okay. property of insurance of you know all the things that new families need moving to the area spanish teacher all that kind of stuff um set up my little play group and then thought right no this is a business idea so then set up relocating too 
um, and Relocating 2 did the website, was online, was getting inquiries from the UK before people have even come out on holiday. Wow. So I was, I'd created something quite amazing because all these people were like, how are you getting these people before they've even come to Spain? Mm. And I would say, because I'm blogging about it, I am talking about it on social media. Um, my website's being found because I called it Relocating to Javier. Mm. And, you know, it was all these things. Um, and uh, I had this amazing launch party and it was really good. Um, but it was very, very clear that Andy didn't support me like I was supporting him. And one day we were in the kitchen and he was just like, your job was to be a housewife. Why can't you just be happy Ooh. going out? You know, why can't you just be happy? I was like, because I'm not happy. I'm depressed. I need to be with people. I need, you know, the banter of control room, of being with people, of dealing with stuff. I'd all of a sudden gone from all that to like nothing. And I was mm. just like, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm really depressed. I want to work. And I yep. thought this would make you happy. I'm doing it when the boys are at school. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what the problem is. Mm -hmm. I really don't understand what the problem is. But he had a massive problem with it. And um, yeah, we'd been out there two years. And he then started basically going back to the UK for like two weeks at a time. And then coming back. And then, yeah, it just... Okay. So that's, that's is this where the divorce happens? So I asked for a trial separation first. And then whilst we were in this trial separation period, he said, right, whatever happens, I want the boys to grow up in Spain. Um, you need to basically make your business work because I will pay you X, but you will obviously have to pay for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, with relocating to, I was earning about a thousand pound a month, but it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And the property game was quite um, male dominated, quite aggressive. Um, and mm -hmm. the first property I helped sell didn't go down very well when they basically kind of like shocked me out a little bit. So I thought, right, what can I do with everything I've created? Um, if we've got to stay out here, then okay, I've got, I've, right, I've got an idea. So I'm going to set up Club Casa. So spoke to lots of my mum saying, how would you feel having a permanent place where you could come to with the babies, with a hot desk in area, with a cafe, where you can have birthday parties, where we can do kids club in the summer, where we can do da 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 da, da. And everyone just went, yes, please, we would love this. So did what everybody else is doing, like did my business plan. So that's a business lesson right there, Sam. Uh, this is a great one. So you actually gone, went to your target customer and went, would you like this, right? You didn't create it first. You asked them yeah. first, would you like this? Great, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. And it was and it was brilliant. So um I'd found this place that was a bit out in the sticks and it was a, it was a primary school um, eight years previous, but um, they didn't get their license properly. And another primary school denounced them like to the, to the Guardia Civil and basically the, the whole school got shut down. The business got shut down because they didn't have the right license. So um, found the school um, and said, look, we're definitely staying here, aren't we? And he was like, yeah, hundred percent. We're definitely staying here. And I said, right, the rental property that we've got, I said, I want my equity out of it. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to in so we've got our house and then we had another house. So I said, the I want the equity out of that to put into Club Casa. Mm -hmm. um, again, more arguments, but I did it. Um, and yeah, the Spanish people called me the crazy English lady because I took <laughs> on a derelict building that basically had been shut down eight years previous and created Club Casa. Wow. Okay. And what's next for Club Casa? So Club Casa was great. Um, and it was the place to be. Everybody came. Um, we had massive events where I made like the what I needed to make for the month in a night. I had four staff. Um, you know, it was just, it was great. It was great. And then um, nine months in, um, Andy, I couldn't get hold of Andy for, for ages. And um, turns out he'd moved back to the UK and basically left us there. Wow. So, so literally God packed his bag, didn't tell you when, and just stayed there. And wow. And is this where it comes to you lost 40 grand? Yeah. So basically I'd pumped the 25 into it. I'd also taken out a 15 grand loan because I realized 25 wasn't enough because it was a derelict building and I'd bought tree houses, bouncy castles, completely refit the cafe, um, architect drawings to be able to get the license to be able to get all these different things um so I had to take out another 15 grand loan to just keep me going because I knew that I had a couple of house sales going through so I knew that it was it was okay to take it out um and then something horrendous happened when we found out Andy had gone back and 
um, Harvey sat on the roof of, a, of our new rental five stories up and said, if we don't go home, I'm going to jump. Wow. Okay. Jesus. So, so you're faced with a tough decision as a mum, you know, and I'm assuming you, you go, go back here in the yeah, UK, right? I, I tried to sell it and the three people who were interested say we'll only buy it if um, you stay and manage it because you are the business. Yeah. Yes, you create the building, but you are the business. The reason people come here is to see you because you make them feel happy. You make them feel safe. If they've got a question, you answer it. And you are the business. Um, I've got a funny little story if I've got time. There was this Robin, yeah. random Robin in Spain. Yeah. Do, not, do not know where it came from, but it kept coming into Club Casa. And it was sat in the kitchen one day. Um, and I'd come back to the UK realising, right, we're going to have to relocate back. I'm going to have to sell it you know and I'm stood in the corner of this room begging like please have somebody come and buy it please have somebody come and buy it and anyway the next day the two staff were doing a kids club and they said oh Sam we've got some bad news and I went what she went the robin the robin's flown into a window and died oh. I was like, what? and the robin had died in the spot where um basically I'd been begging for somebody to come along and buy it and I looked up the meaning behind it. I'm quite spiritual. Mum's quite spiritual. And it basically said, this is the end. Oh, God. So, yeah, this is like, don't be sad. But what basically kind of what you're wishing for is not going to happen. This is the end. And so I basically just had to close it. And um, luckily for me, because I'd signed a five-year lease at 1,500 euros a month. Luckily for me, there was two schools that I'd heard on the grapevine were looking for a new location. So I'd put meetings in with them because I thought at least if I don't sell it, I want Andrea. So it could have been eight years since I bought, bought this building and not had anyone in it. I just mm. started getting 1500 months rent and then I'm having to go home, but potentially I'm still going to have to pay it because I've signed a contract. Um, and luckily for me, a school came in and said, yeah, we'll have it. Amazing. Wow. I lost the money. Yeah. I lost a bit of like self that like, was devastated. But at the end of the day, my boy was the most important thing to me. Um, I was out there. I had no family. I, you know what I mean I was working all the time yes the boys could come to work with me but it wasn't really the life that we'd gone there for so mm, of course of course so so you've you've come obviously you arrived back in the UK um what happens with like do divorce proceedings carry on is that yeah. it yeah divorce proceedings went on for three years so um wow. the UK and we'd rented our like, he wanted to sell our property yeah um, that's one thing I've always said is like, no, we need bricks and mortar in the UK in case there's an emergency and we have to come back. Mm -hmm. um, it was being rented and basically because he wouldn't um, give the tenants notice and apparently both of us have to give notice, even mm -hmm. though I was coming back with children and I'd given them six months notice, I was coming back with children. Um, nobody would give me the house back. So my friend said to me, look, Sam, she said, you've got to come back, you know, come and live with us. Luckily, she had a very large house, and um, I always joked, I said, okay, yes, I'll move into the West Wing. <laughs> so <laughs> moved into the West Wing at hers. Um, and she, we basically lived there for three months while I carried on fighting to say, well, in this country, that is my house. Mm. I own 50% of it. 50% of my cash is in there. I want our house back. Our kids need a home. We can't just be somewhere else. But, yeah. Um, and, yeah, so it was like this. When I was in Spain, this inner entrepreneur just come out. It's yeah. like in the right place at the right time like and just let your mind be calm just things come in it feels like you know when you're backed into a corner or, or in fact you know when you are you know you're left to your own devices that's when you start thinking from a broader scale yeah different deeper level yeah. um which is great you know which is great for you we'll go on to the business side in a second so um if i was going to meet you in a bar for example or going to bump to a networking event how would you tell me what you do yeah, so this has been something I've really struggled with, as you know, um, because it just started off as a business directory. So I was trying to explain the business as a business directory, but it was obviously more than a business directory. So I'm now adopting um, the term hyperlocal influencer um, with a suite of products that can basically help you be more visible in Milton Keynes. So we've got the local discount card, we've got the directory, we've got the magazine, um, we've got networking, I do social media management and training, um, and yeah, helping businesses be more visible. So I'm really kind of like trying to find my feet now, because it's not just one thing. Like most people would just be doing a magazine, 
or just be doing networking or just be doing the directory, you know, and I've done all of them. And that was a bit of shiny marble syndrome and panic, I think. I've got to make all this money to be able to look after us. So I've got, I've got to do more, I've got to do more, I've got to do more. But then doing more is, you've got to do more at the right time. Of course. You know? Yeah. Of course, of course. It makes sense. Okay. And who would you say is like your typical customer? Is it a business owner? Is it a mum? Is it both? Yeah, so luckily I've got both. So I created the Mums Rates um, app and it's a membership so basically i've got the eighteen thousand members in the facebook group mm -hmm. and the idea is to get all of those eighteen thousand members to upgrade to um to my app and basically on there they've got access to 150 local offers you know they make their money back in one offer but then that's the lead funnel for my businesses so to businesses we say oh would you like to put an offer on uh, the mum's rates app the membership that then gets promoted to eighteen thousand members Oh, and it's free of charge for you to do that. Mm. So they put the offer on free of charge and then they're going into my funnel, which is where we then say, oh, but if you're on the business directory, you can then also talk to those 18,000 customers because you can't promote my Facebook group unless you're on the business directory. So makes yeah. sense. Makes complete sense. Okay. Everything went then just become an upsell. I, I created the magazine. I've never had a ma any magazine experience, never had any publishing experience found a great a great uh, graphic designer, a great printer. I did the sales. We had a magazine. There you go. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's kind of, you've got a mindset, you know, I don't know how to do this, but I'll figure it out. That's, you know, from yeah. knowing you for the, over the past year and a half or something like that, you kind of go, I don't know how to do it, but I will try and figure it out some way. Um, what type of kind of problems do your target customer go through, Sam? So um, a lot of them who end up coming to me have been burnt by advertising companies, mm. um, burnt by newspapers who, where they've spent thousands of pounds out in advertising, then it hasn't had the return on investment. Mm. And then they're like, you know, so it's a real challenge. I almost have to break down that barrier of their previous um, mistakes to say, look, if you're with me, um, I know this is very new, you know, social media and Facebook, it's all very new, but I'm affordable. Mm. You know, because that's what I've always kind of has been my UHP, I say, rather than my USP. You know, we've got an affordable package and we've got a high end package. You know, what, what do you need? You know, it's really about getting to know them. What do they need? Um, because it may well be that putting an offer on the Mums Rates app is enough to get them some some traffic, up, you know, customers. For others, they need all four, mm. you know, because they need to be in the magazine, need to be in the directory, need to be talking to the group. Um so yeah it's about what do they need rather than just selling them something mm. i really do have that and i think that's why i get near enough well 100 percent of my work at the moment is through word of mouth referrals um and watching me on social media i, I don't have to pick up a, a call, you know phone call and make a cold call what i have now started doing because i've realized i've got a bit of a block with that is we're approaching all the businesses that have been recommended as great businesses. But I've got three girls now contacting those businesses and doing almost like the sales bit. Oh, you've been recommended on mum's rates. You know, do you want to advertise? And again, that now is just bringing in, bringing in the extra. Um, Amazing. So yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's, um, yeah, it's worked out all right. Amazing stuff. Incredible. And how did you find out about Shift Success? It was over a year ago, right? So, yeah. So I met Robin um at an event in i think it was around 2017 so to base the basic when i got back from spain um there's me two suitcases two boys i've still got my relocating two idea because i thought looking in mum to mum there's a lot of people moving from london to milton Keynes. Mm -hmm. so i tried to carry on doing the relocating two business went into natwest accelerator the mm -hmm. entrepreneurial spark went mm -hmm. in there with relocating two Everyone just kept saying to me, you're Sam from mum to mum. Oh, I get all my all my business leads from you. Um, I've hired three members of staff for your group. I've done this, I've done that. Oh, your group's amazing. Oh, you're amazing. Oh, I can't believe I met you in person. I'm like thinking, it's only a Facebook group. You know what I mean? Like, it, was, it was odd. It yeah. was really odd. Um, and just realised I had to get out networking. I had to keep that um, that lioness that appeared in, in Spain that, that A made me stand up to my um, husband and say no more. That mm -hmm. B made me realise I had to break a very, very bad cycle for my boys. 
um, and C, you know, be me because I've lost me through the marriage, through becoming a mum. And I thought, when I get back to the UK, I've got to do it. So I booked to go to an event in, I think it was Chelmsford or something like that. Mm -hmm. And Robin was speaking and he was amazing. And I read his book, Take Your Shot. And that instantly changed my business overnight because I realised I had to work with mum to mum. The directory, I couldn't give all of it to charity. It had to be my little business and I needed packages. So, I mean, you'll laugh at me. I think the package... The packages were, you know, stupid when I first started out, but his structure gave me what I needed. Um, and then just before I joined Shift Success, I thought I need to look for a mentor because I've got mum's rates, I've got the mag, I've got networking, I've got the directory, I've, I've turned over 50k, but I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm mm-hmm. winging it quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And spoke with, with Rob and he was like, you know, my one-to-one, I'm going to be honest with you, my one-to-one coaching is quite expensive and it sounds like you've got a lot going on personally at the moment, but I would really love to introduce you to Shift Success. And that's when I came on the quick... Um, quick start day. Yeah, quick start day. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, um, can I just ask as well, on your Facebook group right now, how many is in there right now? So my main one has got uh, 18,000 in, yeah. and then I've set up five subgroups and they've wow. got around 500 in at the moment. So wow. and that's helping build the business directories in the other areas, because the idea is to have m- what I've created in every single town in the UK to kind of rival almost like check trade. Yeah. You know, because I've, I've really, you know, I've, I can prove that women majority look for the plumbers, the electricians, everything else, you know, the women of the house usually. Um, and they go to Facebook groups to ask for a recommendation. They don't go to Google. Mm. They go to Facebook groups. But the damage of Facebook groups is if, you know, Uncle Jack is getting his niece to put details in, recommending him all the time. But Uncle Jack's a con artist. Mm. It's dangerous, you know, and some people have been burnt by asking for a recommendation and it's a really bad one. So what I'm trying to do is say, you know, all our sources come from Facebook groups, but they're now on mum's rate. We rate these businesses at five star. And that is the only reason why they're on our directory. Only right. the best to make it on here. Okay. How, how long did it, 18,000 is a lot. How, yeah. how, how, how long did it take to get to that point? <laughs> so believe it or not, the Facebook group started up um, about 10 years ago. Um, because I'd had um, Harvey and I didn't know anybody because I was just literally working in control room and nobody else had had babies around, you know, my age. Mm -hmm. I was the first one to start off the baby chair because 13 women ended up getting pregnant after me. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone was like, don't sit on that chair. That's the, you know, (laughs) something's going on. Um, But uh, yeah, so it started off with just the mummy friends I'd made and then Mm -hmm. they would meet another mummy in the park and say, oh, we must join our Facebook group. And then I just used to say, share things like nappies are cheap in Asda. Um, who fancies going to Willem Park today? Oh, there's this summer fake going on. And then a few of the mums changed corporate life when it was time to go back to work and retrained. So we supported Tiggy's nail business, Mandy's framing business. And then once businesses started getting loads of work, other businesses were like, how have you got all your customers? Oh, through mum to mum. Mm. So then like we started becoming known, but it was a private group and it was literally by word of mouth that it grew. Um, but I would say since I've back, since I've been back in Spain, it's probably um, back in the UK, it's trebled. I think when I come back, I was on around 5,000 and in the last three years, it's gone up to 18. Wow. So, so it's gone like that and then bang, yeah. straight off. Right. Okay. Um, you just recently had an 18,000 pound revenue month, which is is pretty phenomenal okay and there's no beating around the bush there you're also a single mother to two uh pretty full-on kids boys um and you act as not only an inspiration but also a beacon of hope for for single parents um who want to do in business and you know they feel like they can't one thing that sticks out to you straight away and i mentioned this before um the podcast and it's something my parents did to me and that's why i bring it up so often but a lot of people, unfortunately, they look at their kids and go, you are the reason why I can't go into business. Whereas you flipped on the head and said, you kids, you boys are the reason why yeah. I need to carry on and you know scale and start this business, right? Why do you think like that? 
And why not the latter? Why do you not just go about, you know, I'm going to stay where I am. I'm, not, I'm just going to make things comfortable. Why have you gone for the path of, you know, um, most resistance? Yeah, I think um, I'm an Aries. And if someone tells me I can't do it or they're keeping a roof over my head, that sets in something in my stomach that goes, I am going to do this. My boys are the most important thing. You know, I grew up with, you know, not seeing my dad for weeks on end because he had to go and work away. Um, my mum had to have a cleaning job just to meet ends meet. And, you know, I didn't have children not to see them. Um, I do feel a little bit of guilt because we obviously moved to Spain and we had this, for them, we had this amazing life where um, I always, I don't want them to be spoiled, but, you know, they had a, you know, a swimming pool in their back garden. We were on the beach all the time. We were eating in five-star restaurants you know because the business like we made that nearly in a million pound business like mk lighting um and somebody actually said that to me the other day that it's so sad that you know because I, i'm not part of that business now that was part of the divorce that that went and that's why my divorce cost me 22 and a half thousand pounds but you know all i was fighting for was to keep you know keep the house so we had a roof over our head and downsize because we didn't need the big house that we had um and yeah, it's just that that fire. I mean, I think I'm lucky in the respect that I'm a determined person. But, um, you know, when you know you've got something and you've taken it from nothing to a 17,000 turnover, to a 50,000 turnover, to a nearly 80,000 turnover, then it just clicks and you go, oh, I've got something here and I can be a boss. Like, Because as a single parent, I couldn't get a job. Mm. How can I get a job? Two boys have got to be dropped off in the school in the morning. So I have to get someone that starts at half past nine. How many people, they don't want people coming into work at half past nine, mm. you know, six weeks holidays, which is at 14 weeks holidays. I tried to work for a recruitment company, but when it comes to the summer holidays, both childcare and everything else, I was basically working for nothing. And I just thought, I don't want that. I don't want to put my kids into childcare where they're not happy for me to work when actually all that money then is going on childcare. I've got to be able to create something from my dining room table so that I can be here and I can be present. And, you know, we're all got, we've all, my boys have got SEN um, problems. I had dyslexia. So I've got to show them that there is more to life than just school. Like my DNRE hasn't got me to where I am today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the jobs I've had, you know, the things I've dealt with, you know, and that's what I did when I first got back. I looked, I went to a really good um, event, actually, where they said to put your skill sets down on paper from the first job you did when you were 13, paper round, um, right the way through and write all of your skill sets down. And then like the bits, the skills out of all that set, what do you enjoy? So then move that into another list. And again, it's like, it's not what you know all the time. Again, it's who you know. Mm. So people knew I was back. They knew I was looking for work you know, and I literally managed to get a freelance job. I set up as self-employed and got a freelance PR and social media job because I realized I was really, really good at social media and people need people who are really, really good at social media. But it was like, if you want me, I'm freelance. I work remotely. I will come into the office when you need me to come into the office. But, you know, that's how it has to be. And I think I've just had confidence. And what I've realized is one of the biggest blocks out of everybody who's doing it at the moment is confidence. And that mm. imposter syndrome. And I have that imposter syndrome, but I ignore it. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. really do. I've managed to just ignore it. It's it's there all the time. And you know, and as you get bigger and, and better, then the trolls all come out. And but I think that Facebook group helped me because when I changed it from free, like donating to charity to all of a sudden having a business, I got a massive backlash. Mm. Real big backlash. Um you know, because they were like, how can you charge people to advertise in your Facebook group? And it's like, but this Facebook group wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Well, now it's a very common thing, believe it or not. A lot of Facebook yeah. groups do charge to be in certain groups. So, yeah, yeah you're probably one of the you know first people who probably did it back in the day. When yeah. I got back, another group I joined, she was charging £20 per member per month um, to be in this group. And basically, there were some famous bloggers in there and they were like giving you tips and trying to get you to collaborate. I did the maths on, she had, she cut it at 250. She had 250 people in there paying 240 pounds a year. And there was me with my Facebook group of like, at the time, like 15,000 members thinking. <laughs> Hold on a sec. <laughs> yeah, I get it, I get it. Um, 
<laughs> I wrote a quote down. What you? I don't know if you heard yourself say this, but it's great. Um, I didn't have kids to not see them. Mm. That's a very powerful statement you said. And I suppose the reason why you didn't put them in nursery was because you'd yeah the same thing, at, right? I worked night shifts. So I was with them all day. And then I went to work at seven o'clock at night till four o'clock in the morning um, after Sebby was born. I must admit that was a bit, that was quite trying because um, I was then up at seven o'clock in the morning doing the school run, mm -hmm. then with Sebby all day, then putting him to bed and then going to work. Amazing. I've always been like that. I think, I think you know that, stuff is never promised you know seeing my dad and my mum really really struggle nothing's ever promised it's only hard work that gets you there and you've got to put it in you can't just expect it to land at your table because it's not you've got to work for it i love it i absolutely completely agree with you there um with regards to you know you've had lots of lots of challenges and frustrations along the way um what kind of skill sets do you believe you transfer from the police to actually running your own business i know you've mentioned kind of one of them of multitasking and you you've got yeah. your kind of scope there's anything else you can think of yeah so um yeah the multitasking one's massive because everybody just says i do not know how you do it i do mm. not know how you manage the mag manage the card manage the you know the group the directory i don't know how you do it but that's because we were running lots and lots of incidents at the same time um you know, it's, it was a lot of strength to do that role. It was a very emotional role, you know, it, was, it takes a lot of strength, a lot of hours working. And it's, it's, it's a bit like entrepreneur life, really, because, yes. you know, you have to work shifts in being an entrepreneur. You have to work long hours. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I just think that that whole structure as well, it was like great. Like you had to have psychosomatic testing before you even joined. So they knew what kind of person you were. And I went on to train lots of the staff that come through. Um, but I could only train two types of people. And that was the same kind of people like me who just do it. Like they know what they're doing and they just do it. Like I couldn't, I couldn't train methodical people. You know, the ones who have yep. to have like everything all mapped out before they've even gone. And the, uh, you know, the burglars have already done one and you haven't got the containment up and the helicopter's been called, you know, and that kind of thing um so yeah Reenie's Reen just said someone's just said dealing with uncertainty and unpredictability yeah that's 100%. A good one like out. you know I'd have this day you know with the kids I've been at you know 360 playing in the soft play and then I come into work and it was right Sam you're now taking over a fatal d d d d d or Sam we've got a murder or you know you're sat in the control room who's, who's been there like four o'clock in the morning nothing's happened all night and then my, one of the biggest jobs ever you know I remember being sat in control room one morning Sunday morning we're all having a like oh catch 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 up and the next day it was like the 90 I heard the 999 call come through because we used to have it in the same room and it was like I've just found a carpet rolled up with two feet hanging out and I oh, think gosh. there's a dead body in it wow. yeah, it's yeah. Like, and then that and then because it was cross-border you know so I just think manage management skills massive I think and dealing like with that stress like for for me um, like as soon as COVID hit, um, go cardless, I woke up to emails where it was just cancel, 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 cancel. And I was just like, oh my gosh, mm. a big social media client. I was really sorry, Sam, I've just had to furlough 150 staff. So I'm not doing any social media for the next three months. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. That's so COVID hit. Uh, I know we jumped on the phone uh, or Zoom yeah. and, um, you know, there was a few things happening within your business and how did you adapt and overcome with that sam share share with what you did so i took covid to really work on the business rather than in the business so before covid i was out and about every five minutes meeting all these new clients sometimes traveling up to half an hour to meet a client um you know just being crazy really and in that short time zone as well so between 9 30 and 2 30 um and sometimes with the boys with me. So it was like really difficult. So I thought, right, I've got to look at this now. And I went back through the portal and I did that. I've been, you know, really listening to the, you know, the lives and stuff like that. And, um, and price had been a massive thing for me. I knew, I knew my price was wrong, knew it was wrong, but because of, I'm a bit of an empath and really want to help people. It was like, hang on a minute. And I joined a BNI group, which is like nearly two grand a year to join just to join the BNI. Now I'd had that in a package where they got two networking events a month and that package was only like 1200. 
and mm. they got magazine advertising, something else, something else, and something else. And I was like, right, Sam, this is the time now to look at your pricing and actually make sure it's profitable. So I did profit and loss. And although I turned over 25K in, I think it was like three months, weren't enough profit. Yep. So it was like, right, okay, here we go. So <laughs> here we, here <laughs> we go. Just, here we go. And I think like being inspired by Vic, like Vicky, yeah. just amazing. Because I remember being there as well, where she was like, I don't really know what I'm going to do. You know, and then she's like in the group, just smashing it, smashing it, smashing it. And I was just like, right, come on, I've got to have some of this. <laughs> I was like, right, look at my prices. And then still my core products, still yeah. go by my, what Rob says, you know, my affordable one, but all of them trebled all of them traveled and then that is why this month um it's actually been a 14k month but i've actually got another 4k waiting on the dotted line from this week to be signed and sealed how does that make you because i'm so proud of you and you know the mentors on everyone that shifts success but how does it make you feel sam you know you've gone from this journey from you know humble beginnings dads uh you know it's a spot of dad and you know you've gone to spain and you know you've had this kind of divorce going on very very uh full on with your two boys as well um you had this you know divorce that was 40k you lost and just all these trials and tribulations these constant walls how does it feel you know now you've got a successful business and you're producing sums like 14k a month you know how does that it's a bit surreal to be honest i'm not gonna lie it's still a bit surreal still like when I opened that email this morning and there was all that talk about me I was just like who's that you know because I don't recognize it you know I don't and I just see it as I was a mum who was left with nothing apart from the bricks and mortar I lived in and I've had to basically create it um and I want to be inspiring to other people because people stay in domestic violence relationships because they're scared to leave because of the breadwinner because he's got the money the financial control you know and it's like yeah I just want to help other people see that you can do it you know if I've done it with all of my challenges you know and my cha- I've, I've lost 70k winging it 12 and a half grand on my first website that should never have paid 12 and a half grand for I can remember having a conversation with you when we Can first spoke yes. you remember when I when they literally I'd said I couldn't work with them anymore because I couldn't update it because it'd been built in code that I couldn't even you know it was like and really old code um, and then I tried to open up Bedford and they were like, oh, that's going to be another £3,000 now. And I'm like, right, so I've got 10 franchises potentially in place and you're now telling me it's going to cost three grand. But I said, you've just basically made my franchise non-viable. Yeah, yeah. I can remember that conversation when you just, I think just before you started Shift Success and you was fuming. And I, to be honest, I wasn't very pleased either, to be honest. Um, yeah. For the single mothers and fathers who are, watching this who will listen to your story who will listen to this on the podcast as well when it's out there what kind of words of wisdom or action tips or you know motivational you know inspiring comments you can give where someone has got kids they hate their job or they're just stuck in a rut in life and they feel like they've not got options because of their kids what advice would you give to those parents who I'll listen to your story right now. So, you know, it may seem like you're in a black hole and you just cannot see the light, but what you've got to do is I found there was a, a task I did, which was like your ideal future self. And I started off with that. How I just want to be happy, calm, you know, be comfortable. And then looked at what I need, you know, cause like your bills, like we've got like two and a half grand or something going out, like to have a house, to have all these different things. So I had to be realistic in what I had to earn. And basically, I've always had a freelance contract as well as my business. Mm -hmm. I've always doubled it up so that you know that you've got your bread and butter coming in. Um, If you're happy in your job and you can do your side hustle, then that's fine. If you're not happy in that job, it's going to have massive implications on everything because your mindset's not going to be right. Your health's not going to be right because of the stress. And you're not going to be able to. You're going to have massive blocks because you can't move forward. Um, So it's about, even if you have to go and temp, Like, you know, when I talk at the job show, I say to these people, if you're doing it as a job, you can do it freelance, but Mm. you've just got the confidence to be able to go out and get it and and find it. So I always kind of have my good kind of one and a half K as a freelance contract, plus my business. And I think that's how I've got to where I am now. Mm. Because again, when you've um, gone for a really big divorce, got into a bit of debt and things like that, 
that affects how you grow your business. Like I've had to grow it all from funding. Like I make a bit of money, I put it back in. I make a bit more money, I put it back in. So for me, it's like a, it's going to be a four year journey before you, I, I feel like not for everybody, because it depends on your circumstances. If you've got, you know, a partner who's also bringing money into the house and things like that. But for me, this year is going to be my year, but it's taken me four years to get there. You are six months off six figures. Yeah. I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, really. I, I can't quite. And it's, it's funny, I'll go into a meeting and they'll say to me, oh, I thought this was a franchise already. You set this up all yourself. And I'm like, yeah. Amazing. You know, it's, um, yeah, Amazing. It's, it's unbelievable, really. Um, but that, that's because this year has been investing back in. Mm. I, I was a holiday rep. I worked in police control room. I've never managed an advertising agency. I've never produced a magazine. I've never, I've hosted events, but they were like all night pub crawls where they can drink as much. Of course. Oh, I think. Oh, say that again, Sam. Sorry. I think you might have muted. Bear with me a second. I think I'm back. You're back. It goes a little bit wobbly. But yeah, I've done all of this. So it proves you do not, like, it's got to be passion. You've got to have a big why. Like, my why was I don't want anybody saying that somebody's keeping a roof over my head. I'll keep my own roof over my own head. Thank you. And, you know, I think that's like, so your why's got to be right. The business you go into has got to be right. You've got to be passionate about it. Um, Or at least see the growth that will give you the passion because the growth is going to be able to make my life be a bit more like, I keep on saying I really want a holiday home in Spain so that we can just go, right, boys, come on. We're off this weekend. Let's go. Um, That's kind of like having that guy. And I think your vision board, I think the whole way you've mapped this out is great. It's really good because it just, I wish I'd done it from the beginning. Like I wish I'd met you in 2017 because um, I'm just about to take on another project don't kill me this is a really good <laughs> jesus christ sam um, it, but it bolts on yeah, so yeah. i tried to set up a pop-up shop in yeah. a, a shopping center two years mm. ago mm. Um, got everybody in there and basically it's going to um, provide a hub for people with products to go into the shopping center but for a fraction of the price so but now with i'm setting this up with a partner and um she's she's never done business before and i'm going right well we're going to go right back to shift to success this mm. is what you do up a business boom 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 because i had to do it backwards yeah of course you had to go back and refine it yeah so um but it definitely in having a mentor like the app for example can you remember when i just didn't know what to do with this plastic card and yeah. everything else you said there must be an, an app out there now and then just by doing for a little bit more new research because things change all the time i found the guy in sweden yeah amazing it's would you say i think you've got a bit of a serial entrepreneur vibe to yourself like you love starting creating you know yeah and I found that is where my passion is like I went into a business this week that's got two locations um you know doing really really well but within my meeting with them for two hours they were like Sam we just haven't even thought about half this stuff you know I went in to do some LinkedIn training and he said oh my god Sam because I've learned more in four hours than I have with six months with an action coach and it was like and I think it's that that's what's helped is having that confidence now because you know confidence is massive it's huge you know, it's massive you can't do it without confidence and you just have to believe you just have to have that little bit in you to believe and just just go for it what can, what's the worst that can happen you know we're not going to die right so here's no. the thing as well i think with with we all lack on confidence and uh, you know especially when starting out because you can't predict the future and you have got the uncertainty but you have to step forward regardless and as you go your confidence will build um we've got lynn who lynn webb who's just said sam as a single mum of two uh this is so inspiring um which is which is really really good um sam take a look at the link bridge in birmingham burling they had a pop-up space similar to what you've just mentioned ah oh, fab um fab. what would uh what does your future look like now sam you know you've been on this massive journey what is your future for business what's the future of samantha paul and the two boys look like 
So um, they, the two boys have definitely got a calmer mummy now and they come in and join the happy dance um, when I have a happy dance. I had a 6K happy dance the other day in the front room and they were just like high-fiving me and and like Seb's just like, they're both like almost like inner entrepreneurs and you know, they just love it. Um, but yeah, five-year plan now, like a hardcore five-year plan um, because in six years I'll be 50 and I want to, you know, I want to, I don't want to be working till I'm, 65 70 so now is like a real hardcore five-year plan um love business i realized i love being in the early dropped out there again are you still there oh sorry did it pause again you're there yep yeah, carry on yeah. Um, so yeah, just being happy, just being comfortable. Um, I realised that my pa my passion selling advertising is not perhaps great. <laughs> so yep. I'm building the business so that I'll have one person looking after each aspect. So Annabelle looks after the mag, Steph looks after networking, um, the business directory, I'm going to have lots of different refer and earn people looking after those. Um, and then mum's rates, I'm going to get Milton Keynes done, but then I'm potentially going to have that as a franchise so that people take that one on first. And then depending on how, um, how, what's the word, like ambitious they are, they can then add to the business directory. They can add a magazine. They could do what I've done, replicated it. And we can have that now all over the country, but even global, you know, I've just joined this um, network marketing just to see how they get these people. Cause it's almost not, like a cult. You're not, you're, not, you're not allowed to say that word. Oh, network. <laughs> I know, but, Get into the mind. I really love getting into the mindset of these things and the mindset of like how these people just throw away like money on these courses that are, you know, saying they're going to give them passive income um, and all this stuff. But um, yeah, I love. Yeah. So I'm just trying to bring a bit of that in for my own business because yeah. I really love to see mum's rate, mum's rates um, all over the country. You know, I'd love it to be the go to directory, really. That's a powerful, um, powerful vision. I'll tell you what we've. The tradition of shift success, the champagne and truffles are waiting with your name on it when you hit that six figure mark. I'll tell you that. Um, uh, Sam, I want to finish this question. It's an amazing speaking tube. I want to finish this question that I ask everyone. What does entrepreneurship mean to you? So entrepreneurship to me is basically that little inner spark of passion where you can turn something into like there was a I loved your quote the other day where you said you know the the, the cafe you're sitting on was once you know somebody's idea it's having that idea and making it a reality um and yeah and look at like looking back if I if you'd said to me three years ago Sam you're gonna have a six-figure business in three years I would have just laughed at you I would just oh, no but it's that inner just yeah, spark that allows you to do something that you're passionate about i'm now sat at the dining room table you know this week or well, this month i've been at home with my two boys we've been playing football on the field and i've had my biggest month ever if they want something i'm here i can help them if they have a problem i can help them you know i've managed to do all their ehcps which has been no mean feat i've been able to do it all and it's funny i when i went to work for another company i was being barked at but he was the inner entrepreneur. He'd got his empire. He just come in, barked the orders and left and went and played golf. Now, <laughs> I don't ever want to be like that with my team, yeah. but it will be really, really nice when like, when mum's rates, when I relaunched it and I woke up in the morning, I'd made four grand in a weekend just before COVID hit. That's why I was so depressed when everywhere closed. <laughs> um, you know, when you make money, like everyone says, oh yeah, you know, all these people would boast about making money in their sleep, but I made money in my sleep. Mm. That's entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got the possibility to do so, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Love it, amazing. Where can uh, people reach out to you, Sam? If you want to connect with you, what's the best kind of avenue to reach out to you? Um, yeah, mainly social media. Um, the um, S Collective, because I've really got a collective of businesses now. I've just started doing another blog, which is SJP Collective. But I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. I am on Twitter. I am all over Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, just put in Samantha Paul and yeah. this face will show up. 
<laughs> awesome. You will find me. <laughs> Sam, uh, you've been an absolute inspiration. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you know, to all the single parents out there, mothers and fathers, it can be done. Sam's proved it. Um, she's not yeah. the only one as well. It can 100% be done. And um, little by little, you'll piece it together. Um, so Sam, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you. I know the mentors are, the cohorts are, and uh, I can't wait to send that box of champagne out to you uh, very, very soon. Um, take care, enjoy the sun and uh, stay yeah. safe. Thank you. Thanks ever so much for the opportunity and also for Shift to Success because you have you know, made a massive difference to my life. So thank you. No problem. Thank you for doing the work and leading the process. <laughs> <laughs> take thank care, you. Sam. Take Cheers, care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.